was a barrister for four or five years, uh, working late at night. Uh, it was quite challenging having two young children and being in court during the day and uh, doing the night shift and then uh, going back to work at home, you know, between eight and midnight. But um, it was very interesting. I didn't really believe in flexible hours. In fact, I think they thought that you needed to be there, you know, 18 hours a day in order to satisfy them. Sometimes you had some rather bizarre um, performance reviews where one lawyer told me that his wife, who had never worked as a lawyer but who was a homekeeper, thought it must be very difficult to be a mother and to be working in a law firm. And you know, the inescapable inference was that you were either not a good mother or you weren't giving the firm 100%. I was very fortunate that I started in a law firm where there were some senior women, um, so they were good role models, and also in circumstances where the firm I worked for briefed women regularly as well. So I actually had um, those women to look up to um, when I started working. Well, I hope that my experience isn't um, unusual in that I've been lucky to have had um, strong female mentorship right from the beginning of my career. Um, I worked for Marilyn Warren. She wasn't the Chief Justice then, but she was a judge in the commercial court. She was my first job as uh, her associate. And then when I went to the bar, I read with Jane Dixon, who is now a Supreme Court Justice. So I was really lucky to have strong uh, mentorship by strong female world models. And I think one of the great things about um, now is that there are these fantastic groups and there are much more, there's much more collective wisdom about women in the law and how they're managing those different life um, experiences. So for example, there's now, there are now groups of um, Victorian women barristers, there's a group I've been part of in various forms of um, criminal mothers, <laughs> mothers who work in the criminal law, who get together and trade tips and tricks, or just solidarity, or just friendship. I recall some funny instances, such as going to the Essoy Club, uh, which is the barristers club on site in Owen Dixon Chambers, and I recall when I was going into the club, some male barristers noticing us young women barristers coming in and they're going, oh boys, here come the Sheilas. And I'm sure that these days that type of reaction wouldn't occur um, because we now see that we've had 50% of women are now part of the readers intake. We're close to 50% women at the bar as a whole. Um, so there's been a real change over the course of the time that I've been practicing. Because I was female, I also had uh, on at least one or two occasions briefs to appear for clients taken away from me. Once the client heard that I was a female, they said, no, we don't want a woman. And because the um, solicitor who was providing me with the work was themselves a junior solicitor, they didn't feel they could override that. Again, I'd like to think that has changed in the uh, nearly 30 years since that all happened. As a young lawyer, I decided I wanted to go to the bar, and I did, um, very soon after graduating from law school. Uh, later, um, after I got married, uh, I decided actually um, that I wanted to take a long period of time off to care for my children, uh, and I ended up taking seven years out of the workforce um, to look after my children, because that's the way I wanted to um, do things. Take every opportunity that you are given. You just never know where it's going to lead. Uh, I didn't grow up wanting to be a lawyer, never dreamed of being a judge, but someone suggested to me that I might want to be doing law, and so I thought, oh, well, I'll try that out, and uh, things just developed from there. Be back yourself when you um, do go out into practice or into any other um, area, any other way in which you wish to pursue law back yourself. One of the things that we do find a bit with younger women who come into the law is that they tend to second guess their capabilities. It's never too late to change the path that you want to take in law. So as your passions develop when you're working through the law, you can always change a path and change into something different. When you start out, when you're studying or when you start out, keep an open mind about where you're hoping that your studies or your career will take you. Law can take you in a lot of directions, a lot of good directions, 
it's such a broad um, spectrum. I think it's really a matter of, of deciding what your your passions are, and sometimes that won't become obvious until you're in the real world, and that's that's the challenge. I mean, law is very the way it's taught is very remote from from practice and from experience. So the more experience you have of the real world, any experience of the real world will help you get a better sense of where you might gravitate towards. Well, I'll imagine my, if I was about to start studying law now, what would I tell myself? I'd tell myself um, it is a great, rich, exciting journey and um, to keep going. I would say if it's something that you want to do, there's no reason why you can't do it. And to reach out for support and, and get mentors. Um, I like to say uh, uh, networking is like a neural network, you know, I visualise it that way. A whole lot of little lights on a page that are connected by lines, okay? And some people are handed a page that's already lit up, um, that has, you know, a multitude of dots. But those dots can go dark if they do the wrong thing, yeah, very easily. Um, other people are handed a page that looks completely greyed out. But you only need to make one dot, one connection to one person and that opens up a whole lot more connections and then a whole lot more.